All right. Welcome back to the Gopher CEO channel. And it is February 13th, 2021. And what is it today? It's Saturday, separation Saturdays. What do you separate yourself with, right? How do you separate yourself from the competition? You know, on this channel, I'm so excited that I always bring you CEOs, founders, entrepreneurs, and entrepreneurs, people that are making things happen, being driven by mindset. But on Saturdays, I get to speak to my audience, my people, my tribe, directly to you. And what is the separator that I've been able to see in my life, in the businesses that I've been able to run, in the jobs I've been able to have? All right. This topic today is money, knowing your numbers. That's one of the most vital ways to be able to be a separator in your life on Saturdays, especially because it is separation Saturday, knowing your numbers. So I'm going to walk you through some things here. So number one, what is one of the ways that you could start a business when it's brand, brand new, all right? And you're thinking about going to the bank where you personally bank yourself, right? Your personal checking account, your personal credit card, your personal mortgage. Maybe you have an auto loan from your bank, all these types of things. And you go in there thinking, man, I just incorporated. I'm an LLC. I'm a business owner. I'm a sole proprietor. You know, I have a assumed name certificate. I am ready to do business. Mr. or Mrs. Bank, give me some money. Well, first of all, you need to know your numbers. If you're less than two years in business, if you're starting out your business and you want a loan for capital, for buying a, a place, uh, you know, and those are really two main things or equipment, those types of things, okay? Know your numbers. And most of all, know that your bank has an SBA division, right? So small business administration. If you don't really have that at your bank and you're a brand new business, Watch out. You're not going to get lending. That is the, just the truth. Now, if you want to personally leverage some of the things like your home equity, or if you want to get a line of credit based on your excellent credit score and, and do something like that, maybe 50 to 100,000 from the bank, more than likely, if you have a 720 or above credit score, they'll do that. But if you really want to get a real business loan, I mean, I'm, call, I'm talking about 250, 300, half a million dollars, okay, to start a business, you're going to need projections. That's the number one way to know your numbers. What is your industry? What are you doing? What? How are you going to go to market? What's the marketing that you're going to have? What's the budget you're going to have? What, what kind of employees are you going to bring on? What is the projections of sales? What is the projection of income? What is the projection of expenses? So how do you separate yourself from the competition? When you go into your bank, have your numbers ready. If you don't, and oh, by the way, if your number of credit score is lower than probably about 630, 640, I mean, it is going to be really hard for you to personally guarantee that business loan because they already know that right now, unfortunately, you don't have that good of credit. Okay. If you're under 640, you know, 660, you're really pushing the envelope. You want to be in that 680, 720 and above of credit score. So now, Hope you learned something there. If you're a brand new business, small business administration. And by the way, you don't always have to go to the bank. You do have uh, angel investors, venture capitalists out there, private funding, right? Uh, family offices. These are all different types of areas and places of people that are looking to invest into new businesses. But then you're thinking about Shark Tank. You're thinking about going into a, uh, in a, in a meeting and really just being 100% prepared. So I don't know what you're thinking. If uh, if you want to do that, uh, it is a great way to do it as well. But you, you better be thinking strong about your numbers and separating yourself, especially uh, with that type of scenario. So now, now let's talk about a few more minutes here. If you are already in business, you've been in business for a couple of years, you're doing a couple hundred thousand, you're doing a million dollars, you're doing them in $3 million. I mean, you're, you're in business. You've been rocking and rolling. You're the CEO, founder, entrepreneur. You're, you're in this business and now you need capital, working capital. Maybe you need to buy a building. Maybe you just want to be able to buy equipment. Okay. So what is it about a bank that they look at when you think about your tax return? So let's pay attention here. EBITDA. Okay. Uh, earnings before interest, taxes, and, and amortization, all right? That is what they are looking for. They're also looking for your net income in your tax returns to have a positive number. When there's brackets around your net income, that means it was negative. Now, with EBITDA, you are 
adding back interest and amortization and those types of things. But, and if you're rent replacing to buy a building, they'll add that back as well. Okay. If you want more information, obviously contact me, call my number or, or email me uh, through YouTube here or the podcast, but I can share with you a little bit more information, but for this uh, channel or for this uh, interview or, or uh, YouTube, what I wanted to do is basically share with you the, the intricacies of really how a bank looks at you, okay? If your net income, if that's all you look at in your tax return, if it is around brackets, it is not a good thing, okay? If you're around brackets, but somehow you could add back interest, add back rent replacement, add back amortization, and it becomes a nice juicy positive, and then it could service the debt, all right? Debt coverage ratio, it's called in the industry. If you're able to get, let's say, $50,000 of net income, and then you're trying to service a debt of $100,000, as an example, and that payment would be, I don't know, $1,000 a month, Okay. 50,000 is basically about 4,500 a month. But if your debt on a monthly basis is going to be a thousand, that's great. That's like a four to one ratio on your debt coverage ratio. So you're doing good. But let me give you the other example. You made $50,000 out of $400,000 of revenue. Okay. And your net income, but now you want to go borrow $500,000 and that payment's going to be 4,000 a month. Well, guess what? there's really not a bank that's going to help you. You're going to have to go private because what that ratio is, is if you made 50,000 and you're clearing 4,500 a month of net income and your payment is 4,000, that's basically one-to-one. -one, all right. Most banks, you want to separate, separate yourself here. Most banks want to be at 1.2 to 1.5 debt coverage ratio. So hope that's helped you today. This is a short clip called Separation Saturdays. By the way, subscribe to the channel.